Hello everybody, it's Troy from Baker Drinks here. I'm shooting a solo video without Laura today. She's out running around and I was bored, so I thought I'd get something done, something a little productive. Um, kind of a rip off of the old George Thorogood classic. We're gonna do one bourbon, one scotch, and one beer. I'm gonna give you a quick rundown of what they all are. I'm gonna taste through them and uh, probably conclude the video after that. So we're starting with the bourbon, as the lyric of the song goes. Uh, today I've got the Maker's Mark 46 cask strength. It is a Kentucky straight bourbon. It's finished in French oak staves. It's 110.3 proof, 55.15 um, uh, percent ABV. It's a 70 percent corn. 16% uh, wheat, 14% malted barley mash bill. It's coming in around 60 bucks. Okay, so the original Maker's Mark 46 uh, started back in 2010. It was their first new expression at the Maker's Mark distillery since 1953. It was a huge hit um, due to an abundance of requests. Uh, they decided in 2015 to put out a cask strength version it was a distillery only release and then again in 2020 to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the makers cask strength uh, they put out another one and since then it is uh, widely available as a limited release um, it comes in uh, the new bottle now this is the the older bottle the new bottle is uh, I'm sure you've seen it on the shelf it's it's a little classier looking than this i guess is what they're saying um it's batched so flavors and proofs can vary on that new guy it's got the classic red wax maker's mark seal um what more can i say on it um let's get into the nose on this guy uh so a little bit of graham cracker i'm getting um Maybe some toasted oak. Kind of marshmallowy. Some toffee and caramel. A little bit of alcohol. You know, it is 110.3 proof. But it does smell pretty balanced. Um, maybe just a hint of cinnamon in there. So, first drink of the day, I'm definitely getting that, that warm hug, you know, going down, feeling it about right here. Um, vanilla, honey, um, it's, it's well balanced. I, I really like this. Um, so, a little bit of that Maker's Mark Wheat Funk but not in a bad way. Um, if you like weeders, you, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I'd say the finish on this guy is, is medium to long, cinnamony. Um, it's fading into that, uh, that bitter oakiness. Uh, a, a touch drying. I, overall, I like this guy quite a bit. If you can find one of these in your area, I, I recommend it. It's, it's pretty good. Okay. So let's move on to the scotch. So for the scotch today, I've got the Spring Bake 10. Um, it is a Campbelltown, if you're familiar with the different scotch regions of uh, Scotland, obviously. Um, you know, they've got the Highland, the Speyside, the, the Isla, uh, Campbelltown. Um, eh, you can have to do your own research on that other one. I forget it, maybe Lowland, I, ugh, I don't know. Anyways, this is a Campbelltown. Um, it's coming in at 92 proof or 46% ABV. It's a 700 ml bottle instead of a 750. It is non-chill filtered. It, it's coming out of the J&A Mitchell and Company uh, Distillery in Campbelltown, Scotland. Uh, it is aged 10 years, obviously, spring being 10. 60% um, of the aging is ex-bourbon, 40% is ex-sherry. 
And I don't know if that means that they aged it for six years in a bourbon barrel and then four years in a sherry, or if they aged 60% of the mix or the blend in bourbon and 40% in sherry and combined them. Uh, I couldn't find that information. Um, but I did find the uh, Springbank, uh, in general as a region, puts out a lot smaller of a volume than say the Islas do. Um, this distillery specifically puts out about 750,000 liters a year, and by comparison, Lagavulin's putting out about 1.4 million. Um, it, it's the only distillery in Scotland, Springbank, um, that malts, distills, matures, and bottles on site, so it's, it's pretty well known for its uh, consistency and quality. Um, it's coming in about eighty to a hundred dollars um, if you can find one and it's in your budget I, I, I really like these so I would recommend it to you so you can tell based um, you know that focusing the color on the bourbon is much darker than on the scotch and that's because it's aged in those those used barrels and the climate in Scotland's a lot cooler so there's not as much wood interaction to give it that color so on the nose, it's kind of like uh, dried orchard fruits. It's malty. There's some honey, some spice. It's not. It's smoky. Um, what's going on the palate? Mm. So compared to the the bourbon there, this is a lot more delicate, a lot more complex. Um, it's fruity. I get some honey. There's there's definitely the spices. All those things transferred from the palate. There there's just a little kiss of smoke on this, and it's not uh, it's not like a traditional peat. This is more of like a, I don't know, like almost like a burnt almond smokiness, but not quite that bitterness of a burnt almond. Not quite the ashiness of a campfire, but it's definitely got that smoke. This is, this is quite good. It's very balanced. Um, and these scotches, I, I can sit probably for a good 45 minutes to an hour with a two ounce pour of scotch and, and smell it and sip on it and, and really enjoy it the whole time and, and probably find something new or different with just about every uh, interaction. As opposed to the bourbons, I mean, I'm probably going through a two ounce pour of bourbon in about 10, 15 minutes. And I do enjoy them, but the scotches are just something, something a little next level for me personally. Um, so the, the finish on this guy, I'd say isn't super long. It's, it's medium, um, but it, it's for the proof that, that 92 proof, it's quite viscous in the mouth. You, you definitely know you have that in there and it, and it kind of sticks and lingers in a good way. Um, I, I like that a lot. And again, like I said, around $80 to $100. If it's in your price range and you find it, I would definitely get that. So now onto this beer. So it's called the Fall of Troy, Orange Vanilla Imperial Double IPA. It's from the Belching Beaver Brewery in San Diego, California. Coming in at 8.5%. Um, it's using mosaic hops and it's got some lactose in it. So I'm expecting this guy to be um, kind of creamy tasting. Almost that uh, milkshakey feel. And in, in fact, when I did some research on this guy on their website, they called this Troy's Milkshake. And, you know, as I said at the start of the video, I'm Troy from Baker Drinks, so this one on the shelf really appealed to me. Um, so I brought it home to give it a try. Let's let's see how it is. So you don't traditionally nose an IPA, but you know I'm so in the habit of doing that with my alcohol now. Off the nose, it smells a lot like a grapefruit or a grapefruit rind that's been squeezed, and that that oil is squirted up or gotten on you. It's it's pretty pleasant. Um, traditional IPA scent, I would say. You know, a, a much bigger drink on an IPA than on, on the 
bourbon or the scotch, but man, that is really good. So that lactose in there is totally smoothing over the bitterness of the, the hops in that double IPA. That orange vanilla combo with that lactose kind of gives this the uh, dream sickle or cream sickle taste and mouthfeel. It's quite good. So on a hot summer day like we're having right now, I could probably go out and do about, you know, half hour, 45 minutes worth of yard work and come in and crush this guy and be real happy about it. So anyways, that's my review. This is one bourbon, one scotch, one beer. Um, as I said before, I'm Troy from Baker Drinks, and thanks for watching. Uh, you know, if, if you enjoy this kind of content, leave a comment. Um, I know this is the first video without Laura. I'm probably going to get some hate over that, but hopefully I did quite a bit of research on this to, to kind of pique the interest of the whiskey nerds out there and, and try to sound educated. Um, you know, we're just learning this stuff along with you guys, and I'm presenting it out as... Um, what I read off the internet and my personal thoughts on the experience with these. But again, if you like this, uh, leave a comment. Consider subscribing. It, it helps us out a lot. We sure enjoy watching the channel grow. And uh, hit the thumbs up. And until we see you again, cheers.